say it? All right? Why don't you just come out and say it? Now, uh, this person also goes on to say, he is now mocking me in his feelings, which I find a bit inconsiderate and very, in a very downward spiral. Even when he couldn't understand Sally's personal point of view anymore than he could Mina's, he never sat there and marked, sa mocked Sally even after slapping him in the face. It's really a shame Ian is taking on the tradition of butchering a characterization that was one of Sonic's more kinder and considerable, considerate points. It's more, it is more than likely over beliefs surrounding love issues. It's Sonic and Sally, if Sonic and Sally are going on a date, Mina, Mina is portrayed as evil for having incredible realistic concern. And Jeffrey, Sally's old love interest, is now evil too. Oh, and let's not forget Fiona and Amy. Fiona turned traitor just as Jeffrey did, and Amy in Sonic's universe was portrayed as the would-be homewrecker as the would-be homewrecker. <clears throat> I am trying, sincerely trying, with all I have to hope that things will look much better at the end of this arc. But then there's the side to me that says I should probably be fairly pessimistic about the outcome. I guess we'll see. <coughs> okay, first of all, first of all, Fiona turning traitor has nothing to do with, you know, Archie Comics and Ian Flynn shoving Sonic and Sally down our throats. Alright? I mean, who's to say Ken Penders, if he stayed on, who's to say Carl Bowlers, who's to say any other new writer, heck, who's to say Tracy Yardlin, if he was the main writer, Heck, who's to say Jim Valentino from Image Comics? Who's to say any writer from any of the other comics was to come in and not do the same thing to Fiona? Who's to say they wouldn't have done that? Would you have said, oh, they're only doing that to, sh you know, shove Sonic and Sally down our throats? No. <coughs> no. No, they wouldn't have. Oh, no, you wouldn't have. You know why? Because let's take a look at Fiona's character, all right? First of all, first of all, Fiona has always had a shady past. Yeah, she tried to re reconcile herself in the Freedom Fighters. But the reason she left the Freedom Fighters wasn't because of what she found in Scourge when he was evil Sonic and, be, and portraying himself as Sonic for a time. No, it wasn't that. Well, yeah, it was mainly that, but it was also the fact that it was the rules and the regulations that kept her down. All right? It kept her down. That's why she decided to go to the dark side. That's why she decided to be part of Scourger's group, part of the Suppression Squad. Now, yeah, some people may say, well, it seems she's got more plans than got more up her sleeve than just oh I want to do what I want kind of deal yeah maybe she does but you got to remember she's in the, she's kind of in the same boat as Mina but worst off all right she doesn't understand she doesn't understand that when Sonic saved Mighty and Ray that he couldn't save her as well he tried he I mean if he could he would have but he couldn't because of everything that was going on. Alright? Now, yeah, she tried to look past that. She tried to overlook that. And say, you know what, maybe I was wrong. But being around Scourge and everything, she started to see a side of... Well, basically, she started to see more of a side of Scourge she liked more than Sonic. A side that was like, you know, I don't care about rules. I do what I want when I want to do it. That's basically a whole situation. And again, who's to say, if not Ian, who's to say any other comic book writer com coming in wouldn't have done the same thing? So you can't just necessarily say it was to shove uh, Fiona down all, I mean, sho shove Sonic and Sally down our throats. You can't necessarily say that. 
All right, now, another thing. He says that Amy is portrayed as a homewrecker. Okay. Eh. Let's take a look at something here. First of all, how many people have come out and said that the game canon and the comic book canon are not the same canon? <coughs> In other words, they're not the same continuity. They're not. Uh, let it, let me explain something, okay? Let me explain something. The game continuity is different from the Archie comic continuity. Now, Amy, even though she's seen as a, more, a bit more mature and a bit more of a leader at times, which I give Ian Flynn and any other writer working on the book credit for, even though she's portrayed as that, here's the thing. Amy still mentally, mentally, listen to that word, mentally, underline it, mentally is still the same age as she was before she used the Ring of Acorns in issue, between issues 78, 79, and 80 to wish herself older. She's still the same age, mentally. Now again, yes, she has matured at times into being a great possibly being in into being not just a great freedom fighter but being a great leader at times or a good lead well you get the idea but it doesn't mean everything has matured yet not everything her job her, her duty as a freedom fighter and a potential leader yeah that's matured but again like I said it doesn't mean everything else has mentally matured Heard, all right, and one of those things that mentally has not matured is her love and obsession for Sonic. I mean, take a look at the recent Treasure Team Tango story arc in Sonic Universe. Take a look at the first issue of that. Take a look at the first issue. She tells Blaze literally that she's Sonic's girlfriend and cream has to try to correct her by saying isn't it a little premature to con to consider that or say that and you know and Amy has to kind of justify herself saying oh well Sonic knows we're meant to be together but when Amy says well I'm pretty sure he's dating Sally now not Amy but when cream said tells Amy well I'm pretty sure you know Sonic's dating Sally now Amy gets, you know, this kind of mean look on her face by basically saying, telling Cream, Cream, drop it. Like she doesn't want to hear it. See, that's the part of her that's not mentally mature yet. Everything else, like I say, from being a great freedom fighter to being a possibly a great leader to looking at things on a logical sense, that's all there. But her obsession and love for Sonic mentally is not matured yet. I mean, if that has matured, she'd realize, oh, Sonic's dating Sally. That's his choice. No big deal. You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? She's not a homewrecker. She's just not mentally realized and matured enough yet to realize, oh, Sonic's with Sally or Sonic's with this girl or whatever. She's not mentally ready to accept that. Okay? It doesn't mean that she's being portrayed as a homewrecker. She's not. I mean, look, I'll go as... Look, I'll say this. <coughs> look, I'll say this. If Amy was there from the beginning, if Amy was in Sally's place, all right, if the comic book was all based, was loosely based on the games from the beginning, and as well as let's say Sat AM. Let's say that was all loosely based off the games. Which they were, but you know what I'm saying. Let me let me finish. And let's say Amy was put in Sally's place throughout all of this. And Sega decided or the writers on Sat AM would decide, okay, let's put Sonic and Amy together. And the people that wrote the book based around Sat AM say let's do the same thing then you know what? I'll be honest with you. I would have accepted it. 
I mean, if they would have done that back in 93, when Asadiyam first came out and decided, okay, instead of Sally as a love interest, instead of this princess as a love interest, we're going to bring Amy Rose in and do it. And if they would have followed that trait, I'll be honest with you, I would have supported it. I wouldn't, I, I would have, I would have supported that. But the thing is, I didn't know about Amy. Nobody else knew about Amy about two, until about two years later. I mean, yeah, some people can say, well, she was in a magna and all this and all that. True, she was. But nobody here in the States, nobody here in the USA knew about her until about two years later. <coughs> all right? Nobody knew about her until about here in the States until about two years later. And even then, a little history lesson, she was being portrayed as Prince, she was named Princess Sally because Sally was more recognizable. Alright? Get what I'm saying? Okay. Now, Now, he talks now this person also talks about Sonic Tales and Fiona. It basically says to show how this history of butchered continuity uh, basically the next thing he points out is Sonic Tales and Fiona. He says to further show how this history of butchery continued, we need not look any further than Sonic willingly sacrificing his friendship with Tails over Fiona. It's so interesting how the very character who told the very friends dash romance value to got chump by jerk for romance Sonic. I also thought it was interesting how Sonic wasn't at all conscious about the impact it would have with his friendship to Sally as well. Okay. <coughs> okay. First of all, Let's take a look at this in a way. What Sonic did with Fiona by dating Fiona, and you can read this in the issue where Tails discovers this whole situation. And you can read it in further issues as well. In fact, you can read it in 179, issue 179. He tells Tails that the reason he dated Fiona was so that Tails wouldn't get hurt. He knew he knew Tails had a crush on her. He knew Tails was in love with her, but he figured that if he dated Fiona, Tails would understand that him and Fiona were now a couple. But he went on to apologize that he didn't think it all the way through. He didn't really think how Tails would be affected by it if Tails discovered it. And that he was a jerk to Tails for doing it. Alright? That's why he dated Fiona. So that originally he would hope it would not hurt Tails. And Tails would be more understanding. But apparently he realized that it backfired. And that what he should have done is sit down with Tails and explain to him, Look, I know you have a crush on Fiona. I know you're crazy. Heads over heels for her. But... She's older than you, man. She's not the same Fiona you met on that island. You know, she's a different Fiona. I mean, Fiona herself tried telling him that. Fiona herself tried telling him that. But still, there was a part of him that still held out. And some fans still feel as though Tails is still holding out for that possibility. But again, that's why Sonic did what he did. Did it backfire on him? Yes, it did. did. Should he sat down and told Tails why he was doing it? Yes, he should have. But the thing is, he wasn't thinking at the time. All he was thinking about was trying to see if maybe by seeing him and Fiona together, Tails would get over it. But again, that did backfire. But 